discuss this upcoming weekend's sales tax holiday here in the Commonwealth of Mass. And we're grateful to Clinton, the folks here at Will Works, for being willing to open the place up. Before I talk a little more about why we're here, I'd also like to just share a quick update on COVID-19 testing cases and hospitalizations. At this point, more than 2 million people have been tested in Massachusetts for COVID. Total tests day over day have increased slightly, which is a good thing. We're now one of the top states in the country with respect to per capita testing, and we plan to stay there. The positive test rate has ticked down slightly, and the seven-day average is now at about 1.1%, which is good news for the Commonwealth, and our hospitals are handling current patients with no issues. We've seen good progress, and as we discussed last week, we'll obviously continue to monitor the data and pay close attention to the higher-risk communities through the Commonwealth with enhanced community level uh, support for them uh, in collaboration with them. No matter the numbers, everybody has to continue to be vigilant. We talk about this all the time. Uh, a huge part of what got us from where we were to where we are today uh, was the willingness of people in Massachusetts to wear face coverings, to practice good hygiene, uh, to socially distance whenever possible, uh, and to avoid large gatherings, especially those in which people aren't wearing masks and aren't practicing social distancing. The disease won't give up, and, and we can't either. Uh, this year, we've asked, obviously, a tremendous amount from our business community here in Massachusetts, and we've been glad to see so many shops uh, and local businesses get creative and find a way to adapt and evolve. The reopening plans and the guidance that we developed allowed businesses to reopen while we were continuing to battle COVID, uh, and they had to make many difficult decisions along the way to come up with new ways to do business all while trying to continue to do well by their customers and their workers. Um, I want to start just first of all by saying to the folks here at Wheelworks uh, how much we appreciate uh, the work you've done for your workforce and for your customers uh, over the course of the past several months. Um, and it really is months. I mean, I'm constantly having to remind myself that we've basically been in this now for about six months. There are a lot of days when it feels like it's been about six years. Um, for a little bit of history, small businesses have usually employed about half the Massachusetts workforce, and they continue to serve in many respects as the backbone of a lot of our downtowns and main streets. They, in many cases, live in the communities that they work in. Their employees live in or nearby the communities that they work in, and they are, for all intents and purposes, neighbors, families, and friends. This particular company, Wheelworks, has been serving communities here in Massachusetts since 1997 and it's recognized locally and nationally for obvious reasons as one of the great best places around to get a bike or to have one repaired. Um, I think Clint said they repair 27,000 bikes a year. 27,000 bikes a year get repaired. And, and needless to say, um, the single biggest repair. Come on, guys. Tire. Flat tire. There you go. Thank you, Steve. Um, the people who are working here obviously not only help people find what they're looking for, um, but there's obviously a ton of stuff in addition to the bike that can be part of what people are looking for uh, when they're in here shopping. And they obviously support lots of amateur cycling teams, clubs, charity rides, and other kinds of events. Um, it's nice to see a company like this uh, continue to thrive despite all the issues that we all deal with associated with COVID. Today we're here to remind everybody that Saturday, August 29th, and Sunday, August 30th, is the Commonwealth's annual sales tax holiday. That will be the weekend when no one has to pay sales tax on anything less than $2,500. <laughs> I'm chuckling because I constantly hear from friends of mine about how much they look forward to having an opportunity to give it to me in a big way on uh, sales tax weekend. Um, a tax break's always good for the taxpayers, obviously, but this year in particular, we really want everybody to think about taking advantage of the chance that this provides for you to go shop in your local, uh, locally owned, locally operated businesses in your community. And that's why today we're also launching a statewide campaign called My Local MA, as in My Local Massachusetts. The campaign will be run through the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development and the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, and it will run through the end of the year. 
It's an effort to encourage people to shop locally and to make travel plans within Massachusetts. It's also an effort to remind people that their behavior matters. More information about how to do it and why it's so important to support local businesses and small businesses, you can check out mylocalma.com. Lieutenant Governor is going to talk more uh, about some of the details around the campaign, but I want to reiterate that this year in particular, uh, this sales tax holiday uh, is very important and particularly important for local businesses in your communities. We would urge you all to get out and to shop and to shop safely, wear a face covering and maintain social distancing. And if you aren't headed to a brick and mortar store uh, and you're going to purchase online this weekend, obviously those will qualify as well, but we would urge you to use uh, again, companies and organizations that are part of your community here in the Commonwealth of Mass. Nobody would pay sales taxes on those purchases either, uh, even if the delivery of the item occurs after the sales tax holiday weekend is over. So please show your support for the local businesses in your community and get out this weekend uh, and buy something and take advantage of the opportunity not to, not to have to send 6% uh, to the Commonwealth. This weekend, when you do go out, um, don't forget to bring your mask. That's an important point, part of uh, sort of what I would describe as, as the gear, to use a word that would be very familiar to anybody in the bike business. When you're out, make sure your gear includes a face covering, uh, because that is a big part of how we keep each other safe. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor mentioned, to coincide with this year's sales tax holiday, this weekend will mark the start of our My Local MA, My Local Massachusetts ad campaign. Between this weekend and the end of the year, the goal of this campaign is to continually remind people that where you shop, dine, and travel matters. Local businesses, many of which are family owned, like Wheelworks, are strong contributors to the history and character of our main streets, our downtowns, and our villages. They also employ people from the area, and of course, whether it's a shop or a restaurant, they fill a key need in our communities. In line with this year's sales tax holiday, we are launching an advertising campaign this Friday, with $2 million being made available through the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism and the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development, with 500,000 from Mott Trust and 1.5 million from the federal coronavirus relief fund. The My Local MA campaign was developed as a response to the economic impact the COVID-19 pandemic has had on our local businesses and our communities. This statewide ad campaign encourages consumers to support their local economies by shopping at Massachusetts businesses and attractions safely, in person, online, using curbside pickup or takeout, whatever approach works for you, do it. I think everyone knows we all have a role to play in our safety, but we all have a role to play in supporting our local businesses and enhancing our economy. That's why we're timing the launch of this effort with this weekend sales tax holiday. Our goal is to promote the idea that when we all buy local, we're doing our part to preserve the Massachusetts we know and love so much. Massachusetts-based businesses keep our economy running, and spending locally means a good, good things for our statewide and local economies. We're also emphasizing the need to shop safely, which includes masking up, and when you visit, the, when you visit these local businesses. As these ads will say, we are encouraging people to put your money where your heart is, right here in Massachusetts. Over the next several months, you'll find our campaign across social media, on the web, on billboards, on radio and TV, in print publications, and more. We'll work with the 16 regional tourism councils to help implement the overall marketing strategies that encourage residents to purchase products and travel within Massachusetts. Many of these RTCs are connected to chambers of commerce, made up of merchants, restaurants, and downtown partnerships, and they know their local economies best. You can learn more about the campaign and download resources at findmylocalma.com. I'd now like to turn it over to Clint Page. Uh, certainly, there are 
plenty of items under 2,500 here. Uh, I hope that you have a really great weekend ahead to you and your team. Uh, continued success. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to uh, thank Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, Governor Baker, and uh, John Hurst for uh, coming here today. Uh, John gave us a call on Saturday, and so thank you very much. Um, we're one of the winners uh, in retail uh, for the last five and a half, six months. Uh, we were prepared, our staff did a great job, and our customers seem to love our product during this particular downtime when they have more spare time, and obviously we're a good way to use up uh, a couple hours out there. Uh, so uh, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, people that aren't winners right now and why it's important to support retail this weekend and support, to support the people in the food service community as well who are particularly impacted by this virus. Uh, so what we need to do as a Commonwealth and as citizens here is see what we can't do to support all these folks, whether it's smaller retailers that are having a tougher time that may not have uh, been uh, able to catch uh, an idea like we did that's, uh, that has captured people's imagination. They may have a more uh, difficult product to sell, and hopefully they'll be patronized heavily this weekend. And ur do whatever you can to urge your uh, legislators uh, nationally uh, to support the food service industry and what they're trying to accomplish to get a further piece of the next series of programs that may come out to help working people. Uh, none of us want to see us lose any of those institutions in our squares, villages, communities, etc., that we all seem to enjoy to go to for, for lunch or for evening, take the kids, etc., and have a nice time. So do whatever you can, uh, residents here in Massachusetts, uh, to recognize the fact that uh, there's a lot of people out there that are still hurting. Uh, do what you can to come out this weekend and to come out over the next several months to support these businesses that are not doing quite as well. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate all your time. Thank you, Clint. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and all of you, thank you for coming out today. This is a very, very important uh, event that we're looking at this weekend, and, and, and frankly, the, the new campaign that the Governor and Lieutenant Governor are rolling out beginning this week is very welcome, and, and it's going to be very, very important as we educate our consumers, not only for the sales tax holiday, but for back to school and Small Business Saturday, right on through the holiday season, the importance of shopping local and the importance that the consumers have to our entire economy. This will be the 14th sales tax holiday that we've had here in the Commonwealth since uh, the year 2004. This year, uh, Massachusetts will be one of 16 states that will hold a sales tax holiday. Why does the sales tax holiday work? It works because it reminds our consumers that that they need to shop locally and it incents our consumers to shop locally. We know the consumer has unlimited options today. You know, whether it's going across the border to another state or using this contraption to buy anywhere around across the country or around the world. We need to remind them that they need to shop like jobs depend on it because frankly they do. And I can't think of a year in which it's more important than this year for a successful sales tax holiday and a successful sales season throughout this, this fall. Uh, and, you know, we've done some surveying of our members, uh, and I, it's important to point out that 100% of our members now, Governor, are open. And that's an important thing. That's something that, that we're very pleased about, and, and uh, hopefully um, it will create some momentum here in the fall. Yet, of that 100%, still 50% are at a reduced capacity. What is reduced capacity? It's, it means that perhaps they're doing like Clint is doing, curbside. Perhaps they're doing delivery. Perhaps they're doing under 50% occupancy in their store. Um, but, but they are open and, and they are servicing their customer. And they're at reduced capacity because they're working hard to make sure the customer feels, feels safe. And it is important that the customer feels safe, that they know that they can go out and shop and dine safely. We know what we ask, have to do. We have to mask up. We have to sanitize. We have to social distance. We have to wash our hands. If we do those things, we can reinvest in our communities. We can save a lot of entrepreneurs that really have invested their entire life savings and their futures into a lot of Main Street businesses. And, and you know, it, it's great to see that, that, Kent, that, that, that Clint and uh, Wheelworks have really um, reached out to their customers. They've exceeded these state orders. They've made sure that the customers are feeling comfortable. 
yet the, and the customers are coming in. We need the customers to come into a whole range of other stores as well and, uh, and restaurants. Um, our, our, our members are reporting, 20% now are reporting that they are either flat or above last year. That is a significant improvement from uh, June 1 where, when it was only 8%. Yet that also means 80% are down over last year. So, you know, let's do what we can. Let's remind our, ourselves as consumers that we represent 70% of the economy. You know, we hold a lot of power as consumers. And, and the importance of where we spend and how we spend really has an impact on our main streets and the locals, uh, small businesses. And I really thank the Baker Polito administration for this new initiative. And, and I think it's going to go well beyond the sales tax holiday. And we're going to see some, some significant movement back to shopping local throughout this important fall season. Thank you very much, Governor. Questions on this stuff for any of us? I think we're going to pretty much um, stay where we are. Our primary focus at this point is um, is the colleges reopening, whether it's remote or we're with kids coming back to school, uh, and with the K through 12 school reopening. Those are both major. Those are big deals here in the Commonwealth of Mass, and we really want to focus our efforts and our time on those, and uh, and don't anticipate doing anything with respect to the current state of play on on the guidance and advisories with respect to other businesses. Hey, Governor, you said that the uh, gap is going to be a big concern for clusters. Do um, you think it's part of that? I mean, colleges are trying to gather schools, private schools. They're all going to be kind of coming together. How are we going to make sure that people keep these other together? Well, one of the things we've been doing uh, is sort of constantly talking to not just the colleges, but also to the local communities in which the colleges operate about what the sort of rules of engagement, rules of the road are going to be uh, for them, the schools, and for the local communities, and for us as they go through the process of returning to school. Um, I think at this point, it's maybe half the kids, right? Isn't it about half? It's about half the number of kids you would have typically seen come back. Um, so that will have certainly a significant impact on what the task at hand would, act would actually look like compared to a traditional year. And, uh, and I fully expect that the sometimes daily conversations that are going on between us and those local communities around, um, around enforcement and around messaging and around uh, rules of the road, guidance and advisories and everything else are going to continue to be uh, a pretty regular practice for all of us as we head into the month of September. Governor, um, last super Well, we've said for a while now that um, our biggest concern at this point is unmasked, undistanced, un sort of managed events. And, and the reason we said that is because our own contact tracing activity has shown that um, big elements of the rise in cases that we've seen in some of the communities that we would call sort of high risk have not been as a result of people coming to a place like this, okay? Because generally speaking, the people who work here are wearing masks and distancing. The customers aren't allowed in the stores if they don't wear masks and distance. I mean, there's a, as the Lieutenant Governor would say, it's an organized activity. The big challenge um, for us is to, is to bring that kind of discipline to other kinds of events where people clearly haven't been distancing, haven't been wearing masks, and a lot of these involve um, what I would describe as events in which people are familiar with one another and they behave like they're familiar with one another. And, um, and the simple truth of the matter is, as difficult as it is for all of us, um, you know, the, the hugging, the high-fiving, the, um, the singing along to the songs, whatever it might be, uh, indoors or outdoors, uh, particularly in, in close quarter environments, is just the wrong thing to be doing when you're trying to work your way through a pandemic 
uh, and to maintain the ability to continue to make it possible for people to work and to earn a living and pay their rent, pay their mortgage, uh, and pay their employees. And so my primary message um, is exactly as it's always been, which is wear masks if you're going to be outside, social distance, recognize and appreciate that the virus isn't going anywhere. And even if our numbers are low, which they are, um, there are certain parts of Massachusetts uh, where we still have a lot of work to do. And we do have some big events happening with respect to colleges coming back and, uh, and a variety of approaches to, to school reopening happening. Were you shocked by that number, 20,000? You know, I was, um, I was criticized, actually, for saying a few months ago that um, the Biochen event was a, was a seminal event. Um, with respect to Corona here in the Commonwealth. And, um, and I couldn't put a number on it at that point in time. But when I thought about the number of people who attended the conference, the number of people who eventually tested positive who attended the conference, and the lack of, and this is no offense to anybody, but at that point in time, uh, nobody was wearing a mask, nobody was socially distancing, nobody was even behaving with concern about the presence of the virus at all. I mean, all the rules of the game with respect to that have changed. But I do think it speaks to the power of that virus to move from one person to another, to another, to another, to another, if people don't wear masks, don't social distance, don't take seriously the fact that the fundamental strength of COVID-19 is its ability to get from one person to the next quickly. And with regard to that, um, I think if anything, this study, I guess, hasn't been published yet, so I haven't read it. But it certainly would speak on a grander scale to some of the stuff we've seen on a smaller scale. Let's take that wedding in, in Maine. Uh, I think there were 62 people at the wedding, 56 of them tested positive. The age spread was four to 75. Um, there was a wedding that we figured out through our contract tracing program that took place in Rhode Island, where a number of people from Massachusetts went to it. Uh, everybody who went to that wedding except one person tested positive for COVID. Um, there are reasons why we focus so hard on face coverings and distancing and hand washing and, you know, wiping surfaces because these are the things that we all have the power and the control over to do to limit the spread of the virus, and we should continue to do them. Well, I guess, I mean, a typical sales tax holiday weekend and a typical year, which obviously we, we don't seem to have typical anything these days, is somewhere between about 20 and 25 million. Um, but in this particular year, I'm, I'm where John Hurst is, which is uh, it's incredibly important for all of us to remember that there are a lot of local businesses in Massachusetts um, who invest of themselves, both emotionally and financially, in their employees, their customers, and their communities. And I think it would be great if everybody who's looking to buy pretty much anything um, that they've been putting off or that they might do at some point down the road to find a way to go out and make that purchase this weekend. My wife and I are actually talking, believe it or not, we were talking about whether or not we, we, don't, we don't own bikes, but we have kicked the idea around for a while and this may get us over the top. <laughs> no, is it? yeah, I wasn't shopping. Well, um, there's a pretty interesting um, article that uh, I think was in the journal yesterday. It was, based, it was based on a Brookings study that was done several months ago by a number of infectious disease specialists who basically said that one of the biggest problems with um, indoor performance art is uh, singing, shouting, yelling. I mean, back to Jonathan's point about super spreads, that's where super spreads come from. One of the largest outbreaks. Um, that took place in other parts of the country was a choir in, uh, in the state of Washington. Um, one person uh, infected, I think, somewhere between 30 and 40 people over the course of three or four hours at a choir practice. Uh, I, I think it's terrible what, um, what the impact of this virus is on particular sectors 
of our community. Um, I think Clint's point was spot on when he said, you know, this is a business that people leaned into as part of the uh, as part of the pandemic for a whole bunch of reasons: more free time outside, um, opportunity to get exercise they might not be able to get in a gym, all that sort of thing. Um, but there are certain sectors of our economy um, that are paying an incredibly steep price, uh, an incredibly painful steep price for COVID and for a lot of the restrictions and the rules and the guidance that we've put in place. And if those restrictions and those, and those rules weren't based on either real life experience other people had who didn't put those rules or restrictions in place or the guidance we get from people who know a lot more about this uh, on the infectious disease side, certainly than we do, um, we wouldn't go there because we recognize and understand the hit that it creates um, for, for fam businesses and families. Most of these are, you know, family owned. Um, but, you know, rule number one here has to be to balance the economic health of the Commonwealth with the contagious nature of this virus. And it definitely creates some really painful circumstances for certain sectors. Well, the first thing I'd say about the T um, is uh, they are obviously working through an enormously difficult and disruptive period. I mean, the, the change in ridership for the MBTA on all, every platform between, um, you know, March and the end, beginning of March and the end of March, not to mention the end of March to now, has been uh, profound and unprecedented. And, um, and there's a lot of debate and discussion about when they'll start to see ridership come back. Um, but I think, I think one of the good things about the T's decision to start talking about this now is they're thinking about it as a two-year issue. And, uh, and they're starting to plan for it two or three months into the current fiscal year. And I think they're smart in saying nothing's off the table. I think they're smart in starting early on this. And I think they're, they're thinking the right way about the fact that ridership represents historically about 50% of their revenue base. Um, 40, 50 percent, depending upon the year. Um, it's pretty clear that that kind of expectation with regard to riders, um, unless there's a pretty significant change in both employer behavior and employee behavior, is, is probably not going uh, is not going to move immediately. I mean, if you, and that's not just true for the T. I mean, if you think about Logan Airport, I think Logan Airport's total book of business is probably down about 80 or 90 percent from where it was before the pandemic hit too. I mean, travel, transportation, leisure, hospitality, entertainment, um, those are the places and spaces where this thing has really created some enormous difficulties and challenges for all of us. But I'm glad the T's starting now. It would be a mistake to wait until February or March of next year to start talking about what to do about this. So I'm gonna ask you about two communities in particular. In order to get code red on your map, it's gonna be eight cases per 100,000 over two weeks. Yep. Well, I think in, first of all, I would, I, would, I would say that, you know, that whole near North Shore, and I live, I live there, um, has been particularly hit. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think one of them is um, you have a lot of close quarters around living arrangements across all of those communities for the most part, Everett, Chelsea, Revere, um, Lynn. Uh, I think the second thing is the, um, the prevalence of um, what I would describe as um, outdoor, outdoor events of one type or another. There have been a bunch of gatherings in all of those places, and those gatherings uh, have created issues. I also think a lot of those folks get up and, uh, and go to work every day, and they work in a lot of industries um, that have a lot of contact with other people. Um, now, most of the cluster work that's been done uh, tends to point to what I would describe as private gatherings more than work-related stuff. But, you know, a lot of the people in those communities work in, you know, restaurants and in, um, and in grocery stores and, and other retail establishments, um, and they work. And, um, and, and I do think that 
one of the things we need to do a better job on, and we've been talking about this, is, um, is messaging and communicating to folks in those communities um, more effectively and, uh, and more often. And we've also been expanding our testing capacity in those places as well, which I do believe will help. In the places where we've expanded testing capacity and a lot of the education that comes um, as part of that, um, it's made a difference with respect to case growth. I think the outreach, the outreach has to be in sort of what I would call the six primary languages in Massachusetts. Absolutely. I haven't been, and uh, and honestly, um, I'm a lot more focused on what's going on in Massachusetts right now. Um, we have tons of work to do uh, on a whole series of, of issues and initiatives that involve COVID, that involve the economy, that involve the budget, that involve education, that involve colleges coming back, K through 12. I mean, there's plenty to do to keep us busy around here. And by the way, of course, the Bruins and the Celtics are both in the playoffs. So. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm certainly, uh, I would describe myself as a, as a member of uh, sort of the, the pragmatic and practical Republican Party, um, and I certainly think there are many colleagues of mine in, in state and federal government who fall in the same, and local government who fall in the same category. And, um, and I do believe that uh, for many people, um, what they really want most out of their government uh, is some demonstrated commitment to hearing all voices and then trying to do the things you think make the most sense uh, for the people that you're supposed to serve and represent. And, um, and I've said before that one of my biggest problems with Washington is I feel like people there spend most of their time trying to convince you about who they're against and who their enemies are. And I wish they would spend a lot more time worrying about the fact that they represent all of the people of the U.S. And I sure wish they would get around to doing something. And I put this on both parties with respect to uh, creating a, a relief package to deal with the unemployment, uh, the extension of the unemployment uh, benefits for people and the, and the, and the stimulus for, for state and local governments. And I really hope that at some point, you know, before we get to the election, they come back and do this. Because a lot of people made a lot of commitments around this, and I would really like to see them follow through and execute on it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you again, and thanks to Wheelworks for hosting. Much appreciated.